Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, episode 201. Coming up on this show today, we're going to talk about a new addition to the Leatherman flagship models that you can now buy. In the state of the collection, we talk about a Fred Perrin knife that I've fallen madly in love with. And uh, then, well, my daughter, the Knife Junkette. No, I promised I wouldn't call her that. My daughter, Eden, is going to be coming on. She has done a number of... uh, uh, she's directed a number of videos uh, right here on the Knife Junkie channel. Uh, one of her most uh, accomplished videos was the glass breaking video from this past summer. Uh, she just directed one yesterday, a pocket check, uh, out in the woods this past weekend when we were out there uh, jamming and having fun. So uh, she will be joining uh, for a little bit of an interview and to show off her five favorite knives in my collection. Uh, before we uh, get moving into this important uh, topic and, and other such things, I want to do a, a pocket check. And I'm excited for this one because I have made one of my one of my favorite knives uh, that I've been observing on Instagram over the past year and a half or a year or so. I've made it mine finally, and I'm very excited. You've heard about it over the past week. It's been a loner. Now it is no longer a loner. And it is the Arcane Design Antimatter. Uh, one of the few knives out there that is uh, actually double-edged, a double-edged folder dagger, and you have this perfect symmetry. And uh, it's not an easy design thing. It's not an easy design feat to accomplish. And it's not very common due to legality issues. Uh, But for those of us who are dagger junkies or just love daggers and the symmetry of this kind of design, uh, we're all very excited that this came out. Uh, Before it, you have the uh, Sharp by Design, uh, Brian Nadeau made um, uh, Arch Nemesis. Very, very, very hard to get custom knife. Perfectly symmetrical double-edged dagger. And then you had the Hinderer. Uh, I always forget the name. Is it the Maximus? Yes, it's the Maximus. Uh, the Hinderer, that's a double-edged also. Uh, but they came out with one run and haven't come out with the Triway yet. So I haven't gotten that. So when I saw uh, Israel Bacchus came out with this, uh, he first came out with the Necronaut, that really aggressive Tanto, uh, really uh, raised some eyebrows with his cool design. And then <clears throat> this came out, a design collaboration with uh, Felix from uh, Something Obscene Company. I was thrilled. You, you just hear me talk about it. I just can't stop. Uh, this is made by Riot, with all that that implies quality, et cetera. Now, I'm not good with the left hand on this one, so I'm just going to bring my right hand in. Awesome, awesome action. That's how I usually close it, is just let it fall shut uh, because it's double-edged. Got to be careful. And then for practical considerations today, if any actual cutting needs come up, uh, I have the adorable Finch Runtley. Adorable but stout-hearted, let's say. Finch Runtley. Look at that blade. Love this thing. Uh, This was my uh, Christmas 2020 unboxing knife, and it just tore through those packages. A uh, very stout blade, a great, even though it looks wedge-like in cross-section here, it really is a great cardboard cutter. If you have a lot of boxes to break down, it's a good one, uh, though you might find the grip, especially if you have big, uh, big meat hooks, you might find the grip a little small. So uh, this is what I have in my pocket today. What do you have in your pocket today? Uh, leave a comment below, I always love, uh, finding out what people carry and expensive or not, I find that people who watch this show and listen to this podcast have very good taste. And that could range from the $15 Kershaw to the $1,500 custom knife. I just find that uh, people are very interested in design, uh, people who follow this show. So let us know what you're carrying in your pocket. Um, Now, one of the kind of knives I like to carry, I do like pocket hogs, I gotta say, big, knives. I just do like big folders. and uh, But, you know, sometimes they're impractical. Sometimes they eat up a little bit too much pocket space. Uh, and maybe in that's the case with the knife giveaway knife that we had uh, March 2020. The Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway was something else. It was the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. Mm. 
excuse me, uh, Mr. Reed Mertz, uh, a loyal patron, one that uh, we spun the wheel of destiny and it landed on Reed Mertz. I say Mertz for some reason, because I think that's German for March. And so I'm going to say it like that. Reed Mertz, uh, if you don't mind. Kaiser Sheepdog XL in 154 CM steel, which is awesome. The ones that they came out with now, I think is BD1. Uh, but I scored a, an older one with 154 cm, and it's got natural tan canvas micarta. It is a gigantic knife. If you know what the uh, Kaiser Sheepdog looks like, it's got a big, for lack of a better term, squared off uh, cleaver blade. Well, this one's four inches long, so it is giant. Very wide with a full, almost, well, like a three quarters uh, flat grind. It is a slicing machine. So we just sent that out. We meaning me, I just sent that out yesterday. So Reed, you should be getting that on Monday or I don't remember when they said, but it's coming soon. Everyone complains about the US Postal Service. I have to say, uh, I would love to because I love complaining about government operations and such, but I have not really been let down by USPS in this whole past year uh, that they've been getting ragged on. So yours is coming. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity before we go into Life Knife News, Knife Life News to uh, thank the patrons uh, that are members of this show, all of them, and read off their names and show, uh, just tip, tip my hat to them because I really appreciate uh, your giving us money to, to produce this show. That's really what you're doing. And it's, it's greatly appreciated. Benjamin Belkin, thank you, sir. We have Jason Edwards. We have Nick Martino, Martin Gamboa, John Ladner, we have Kurt Cromco, Ezekiel Yates, one half of Shredder Knife Reviews. We have Mr. Filato, last month's uh, winner. Jesse Tellis. We have Mike Latham, you know him, CollectorKnives.net. Edwin Callow, our resident uh, Emerson expert, and he's also Callow PR on uh, Instagram and uh, Callow PR Blade Reviews on uh, YouTube. Check him out. We have Spirited Blades, Ryan Leitner. We have the lucky Caleb Townsend, Reed Mertz, again, Kevin Seastrom. We have Jock across the shock over there in Great Britain. We have Timothy Becker. We have the great and powerful Jason Knight. You know Jason Knight. We have Fred Lynn. Thank you, Fred. The Knife Whisperer, Joe, we love your videos. We have Where is Kristoff? I think I have some idea of where you are, Kristoff. And our very first patron, Brent. Thank you all so very, very much. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, we're doing some upgrades here. Uh, Jim has been going through a, 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 some labors of love to upgrade things here and all of your support really, really helps. So thank you. Thank you all very, very much. And um, well, you'll be seeing great things to come uh, very, very soon. So thank you. Um, also, we will be doing some more giveaways and not just uh, Patreon related. We'll be doing, um, we're going to be actually phasing away from that in particular and, and doing it a little bit of a, in a slightly different way, which will be uh, maybe more. And here's a, here's a good, uh, well, key term for these days. It'll be more inclusive. Well, we will have uh, gentleman junkie, junkie only uh, uh, giveaways, but also some more other uh, giveaways for everybody. And uh, it'll be fun. Uh, so I, I want to ask you, before we move into Knife Life News, are you crazy about knives? Is that why you're listening? Do you like the show? Is that why you're watching? Well, check us out on Patreon and you'll know what I'm talking about here, what I'm talking about. Uh, all these different things you get. There are three levels of support. You get Knife Junkie stickers. You get a mention on the podcast, like, like I just did. You get early access to the Sunday interview and midweek supplemental shows with no ads. Uh, you get other exclusive opportunities and content. Your support helps fund the infrastructure needs of the show, like hosting, servers, apps, and equipment, as well as new knives for review, donation, and giveaway. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us can get you. The quickest way to go and uh, to go there is to go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Uh, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So a couple of a uh, couple of new things out in the knife world uh, that are interesting. Now, you don't hear me talk about Leathermans often. Uh, they are definitely the preeminent multi-tool um, when you're when you're talking about uh, 
harder use tools. I would say that the preeminent uh, multi-tool pocket knife is the Victorinox or the Swiss Army style uh, knife. But when it comes to harder use multi-tool, like the things that Navy SEALs carry and the things that construction workers carry, that kind of thing, it's a Leatherman. And uh, they have a very, very broad product base at this point with tool sets that can basically take on any job. Uh, and now it's even more uh, universal. They have a ratchet attachment, now a ratchet wrench that they offer to uh, any one of their um, products, any one of the Leatherman products that has the quarter inch um, attachment to it. So you can really now bear down and get some, get some uh, serious torque behind your Leatherman uh, driving <laughs> bit driving or uh whatever you are whatever you're driving so i think it's a uh, pretty cool a ratchet attachment I, I think i need to get into leatherman's um i think if i had a um a job that was more uh oriented towards physical labor i would i would probably obsess about leatherman's because you can really go down that hole um with the wide offerings uh but so this is available on uh, like i said on their flagship models uh, let's see, which ones are they? Um, well, they're flagship models. I can't, I don't have a list of them in front of me, but the, uh, the great thing about this is that, uh, well, Gerber came out with their center drive thing and, uh, Leatherman responded. I like that nimbleness. Oh, here it is. The Skeletool, the charge, the wave and the signal. Now those are all, uh, flagship standbys from Leatherman you can now add this ratchet wrench attachment. So pretty cool, uh, pretty cool supplementary item from Leatherman. Uh, and next we were talking about sheepdog, uh, the, the sheepdog knife Kaiser that we gave away. Well, sheepdog knives is a, a custom knife company run by Chris Conway. And Kaiser has come out with a new collaboration with Chris Conway of Sheepdog Knives. Uh, this is the Deviant. I've been seeing a lot of pictures on uh, Instagram of this knife lately, and uh, I really like it. It's a very toned down uh, design compared to the Sheepdog, which, like I said, was that really audacious sort of cleaver style uh, blade that really in, uh, did a, a great job in popularizing that style of blade. Um, it had been out and about, but really that uh, the sheepdog and all the different iterations and sizes uh, really popularized it. Well, this new uh, uh, Kaiser Deviant from Chris Conway is a smaller uh, three and a uh, three inch uh, drop point. Uh, it's got a really nice uh, setup with the handles. It's a G10 uh, scale with a with a um, micarta bolster and uh, uh, just a very usable drop point uh, blade coming in at 3.8 ounces. But you can also get a copper model, which is cool. We all like copper. We love how it patinas and the character that it takes on. And that is a much bulkier 4.89 ounces. Uh, but I think this thing is gonna be a good success for uh, Kaiser. Uh, it has a great pedigree, no pun intended, uh, with the um, with the sheepdog lineup, but also it's a little bit more practical. So if you like the design sense of Chris Conway, uh, this knife might be a more practical uh, option than the than the big sheepdog from Kaiser. So looking forward to seeing that. And as I said, uh, I've been seeing that being plugged quite a bit on the Kaiser uh, Instagram page. So take a look for that. Next in the state of the collection, I wanna talk about a brand new knife that I am carrying quite a bit. And you may have seen it on uh, the pocket check from uh, this past weekend when I was out in the woods with my daughters and it is the Spyderco Street Bowie. Pardon me. So uh, the Spyderco Street Bowie is a knife designed by the French ex-commando, uh, uh, competitive martial artist, Kali fighter, just general uh, bad dude, Fred Perrin. Uh, if you follow Fred Perrin on Instagram, you will see all of these handmade knives that he that he makes. And they're all defense oriented and they all are one of a kind, um, very handmade looking. And I, I really dig them. He he can flex into high fit and finish and and into. Uh, uh, but I, I like the handmade look of a lot of his street tools. 
And uh, Spider-Co has done a number of collaborations with him, I think three. And uh, to me, this is the most interesting. This is the Spider-Co Street Beat, uh, not the Street Beat. This is the Spider-Co Street Bowie. Street Beat is a smaller version of this. Uh, it's a five inch fully flat ground Bowie blade in VG10 with this amazing contoured handle. It's a craton handle that has a, sort of a rubberized insert. And uh, incidentally, I was concerned that that rubberized insert was going to grab onto my shirts and really print uh, with, you know, I was planning on wearing this in the waistband. Uh, and I'm happy to report that though it is grippy and is great for grip and, and for uh, ergonomics, it does not interfere and grip onto your shirt and, and get all bunched up. That, that has happened to me before with heavily textured um, G10 handles or with uh, rubberized handles. So you don't get that with this. You get five inches of very usable, very sharp um, VG10. I mean, I, I would say, yes, this is definitely a self-defense and weapony knife, but I would also say that since it carries so easily, it's very light and thin, and people have bagged on the sheath, and, and if you asked me, the moment I'd got it, I'd say it was garbage. It broke in. The sheath is amazing. I love it. Except if you can hear that, it's got a little bit of loose rattle in these grommets. I have to, I have to fix that. But so maybe it's not totally amazing. But it's a great sheath, and the thing hides away well. And what I was getting at was, I would think this would be a very practical knife to carry just for EDC tasks. Now they do make a three and a half inch version of this, which is. Um, out of print currently, I think, but uh, much coveted. And that might even be more practical to carry. Uh, I just want to show a couple of comparisons with this street beat. Uh, kni other knives that I carry for uh, with self-defense in mind. Just real quick. So this, you see this one quite a bit. I show this. That's the uh, Copus Designs Ed Calderon Elvia. Much smaller, much, uh, much more purpose-driven, much less utility than this. Um, here it is with a borrowed PY, that's a Bastinelli knife designed by uh, Fred Mastro. So basically the same size, much smaller handle, which is definitely better for covert carry in my case, or I should just say under, you know, in the waistband carry. And then this is another one I've been carrying quite a bit lately. That is the Rapid Strike by Tops, a four inch double edged blade. And it kind of looks dwarfed here sitting on top of the... Uh, of the street Bowie, but uh, in reality, they're both very usable in terms of grip. I mean, I can hold on to them, and they've got uh, got a lot a lot of utility. In any case, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking with it with the uh, Fred Perrin designed Spider Co. Street Bowie. I am loving this thing, and uh, I do. Uh, I am going to look for how it performs outside uh, as I start to go out and work in the backyard more uh, in the spring. So, Spider Coast Street Beat Bowie, hopefully next week, I'll have more new knives to present. Okay, so I teased this before. All right. I'm going to set this knife down on the knife cam, and uh, we have a special guest rolling in here. So, there it is. Look at that beautiful dagger grind on this gorgeous Riot dagger, and I'm going to... I'm going to set this aside for now, and welcome <laughs> to the show, my daughter, Eden. Eden, welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you for having me on. Uh, it's quite a pleasure. Uh, Eden is a, a uh, an aspiring photographer and uh, videographer. She has directed a number of videos. I think the most successful one you've directed to date, uh, for me anyway, is right. the uh, glass breaker video from the summer. That was yeah, a lot of fun. That was fun to shoot. That was yeah. a lot of good camera movement on that one. Thank you. You're welcome. So obviously you've been my daughter for as long as you've been alive. Yes. So you're aware that I like knives. Yes, very aware. Okay, very aware. Uh, I, I would say that you have probably developed a little bit of a, an appreciation or interest in them. Definitely, yeah. That's cool. I can, yeah, yes. Yes, well, uh, your mother also likes knives. Yeah, she does, them. she does. Okay. Um, I can appreciate a good knife. So, yeah. Great. So you had a couple of questions you wanted to ask. Yes, me. Uh, I did. 
So what started your love for knives? What started my love for knives is your great grandfather, my grandfather, uh, Grandpa Tignorelli. Uh, he was a uh, he was a very self reliant person, so he could make anything. He could uh, he could get himself out of most situations, and uh, he was just the kind of guy who could who could build. And uh, so uh, he always had a knife on him, and that that really inspired me. I like that idea of being self reliant, but also back when I was a kid. And you don't see this much these days with your entertainment. But when I was a kid, it seemed like most of the uh, men had knives on their belts. Yeah. There are a lot of adventure shows when I was a kid. So yeah. I like that, too. They um, like with like um, certain Indiana Jones movies. He has like these big daggers and like they always look cool. Yeah. Um, so, I yes. Yeah. Um, it does seem like that in certain oldish adventure movies yeah. but um i do see some of it in the new movies but not usually the ones that i watch on my own because they want to be kids safe yeah. if you will. Yeah. yeah um but yeah well in that movie jumanji the rock carries around a big knife yeah. and the whole time i'm like but just pull it out and use it and he does at one point but not long enough for me I, to, for me to identify <laughs> all right uh estimate how many knives you have in your collection that goes for Switchblades, folders, swords, the whole enchilada. The whole enchilada. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Is this the uh, mommy answer or is this the real answer? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, I would say, uh, I would say, including everything, and I'm even going to put tomahawks and warhammer yes, because everything. I have that. Uh, I would say 200. I would 200? Say 200. And I'm thinking like knives in the car that I've forgotten about. All yeah. That. Yeah. 200. Soup to nuts. All right. Uh, why did he start the Knife Junkie? So the Knife Junkie uh, uh, was an idea that Jim had. Um, Jim, our producer and director here, uh, we worked together and and he suggested sometime, he'd like, it'd be really great for us to do a podcast. And uh, you have this love of knives. And I remember saying to him, yeah, but I can't talk about knives and get out, you know, like, and uh, Actually, I can. It turns out, <laughs> but uh, it was Jim. Jim's idea, and I, I was, I was reluctant. And then I remember one day I had an errand, and I was driving around, and I tried out a new podcast, and it was two guys talking. And I remember thinking, man, if these guys can have a podcast, I, I thought I ended up liking the podcast, and then it's one that I follow now. But at the time, I was like, these dorks. If these dorks can do it, we dorks can yeah. do it. So. Uh, so I remember calling Jim from the car and saying, let's let's do your idea. And then it went from there. Uh, but but also, I love podcasts. I just love listening to them. So it's an art form that uh, is exciting to me. So it's exciting to be a part of it. You can do it like anytime, any place. So that's like um, with audiobooks. Sometimes I listen to audiobooks. You can do that while doing the dishes and stuff. You don't yeah. like you can't read a book while doing the dishes, but you you can listen to a podcast. So yeah, yeah. yeah. And get that knowledge. And, and um, also, I mean, you ask why I get, also, I wanted to meet all these people, uh, the people whose videos, uh, video reviews I was watching. I, I love doing interviews with video reviewers, but also knife makers. I was uh, excited to meet knife makers and talk to them about their, their work and kind of, uh, you know, uh, really get to know these people. That's yeah. That's fun. So what's your favorite fixed spade and folder in your collection? Funny you should ask, because I just happen to have them out, as usual. Uh, favorite folder in the collection is here, I'll put it under here, is the right now. I mean, it's 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 hard to gauge. I have so many favorites. But right now, it's the Spartan Harzi folder, and this one in particular, because uh, after interviewing Curtis Iovito, he said, send me your Spartan Arzi folder and a copy of your logo and I'll engrave it in there. So I love this knife because it's my only knife that says the knife junkie on it and it's engraved. And plus, it's just such an amazing folder. It's like a combination between a Sabenza and an XM24 and and all the knives I love. So yeah. uh, and fix blade, you know, these 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 things change. They yeah. they they change around. But uh, I would say that my favorite fixed blade right now is this. I like, yeah, yeah, I really like it. I, I saw this before the podcast, and I think it's a very nice knife. Yeah. 
Reminds me of an Indian knife for some reason. Indian knife. Mm -hmm. This is a um, fighting stiletto, the number two seven inch uh, blade from Randall Made Knives, the legendary Randall Made Knives. I was lucky enough to score this on Knife Center. Yes, Knife Center gets a small infusion of Randall Made Knives periodically. So you don't have to wait five years. It's just because <laughs> it's true. It takes yeah. five years <laughs> yeah. to get one of these. But this one in particular is what I would order. I would have ordered this number two, seven inch blade with the stacked leather contour. This is exactly the setup for this knife that I would have gotten. And it just so happened that they had it on Knife Center. And I know they don't last long, so I jumped on it. So this, is, this would be my favorite fixed blade right now. And this would be my favorite folder right now. Very nice. Now, this is the last one. Mm -hmm. What is the favorite knife? That, what is like the favorite knife that you've always wanted and you finally got? Right. That's a good question. Um, there are a lot of those, but the one that sticks out most uh, is this. This is the Les George VCEP, V E C P, VCEP. Uh, I just think it's a beautiful and elegant design. And uh, I got the ProTech switch or automatic version of it uh, called the Rock Eye long before I got this. Now, this knife is a um, production version or a mid tech version of Les George's custom Rock Eye. And when I bought this, even I got it from a guy in Singapore, and it took like a month to get here. And I thought at one point, I thought, it was definitely in the pocket of some customs agent along the way and that I was never going to get it. And then it showed up. Bing. Yeah, exactly. Bing. Uh, before we move on, we, uh, we're going to do a little thing here. Uh, I want to ask you what you're carrying in your pocket, because uh, I know you've got a couple of knives. Yeah, I got uh, two knives. So I carry around this knife a lot because um, I really like the design. I like the little heel here. It is a purple swirl rough rider and I got it for Christmas last year. And I uh Lady Lug and I really it really makes me feel safe. Um and I carry it around. Um I try to keep it in its box if I'm at home, but um I really um I really like the way the, the blade is shaped and I like the purple swirl. So so yeah. that's a rough rider there. It is. Here, well, hold that up a little bit closer. Let's see. That swirl pattern is so nice. They do some beautiful handle covers, don't they? Yeah, they do. Now, I, I like that uh, that heel, that lady heel. That's a traditional um, kind of knife that ladies carried. Uh, Great Eastern Cutlery made a version of that. I think that's a much coveted knife. And uh, I got one for for mommy, uh, yeah. for Miss, Mrs. Knife Junkie. And then she ended up getting a whole bunch of them for her female cousins in, in different handle covers. So uh, this is a great little knife. And incidentally, it cuts well. You said it makes you feel safe. We know that you don't pull that out or carry I, I that for self-defense. But you like, we go out in the woods. She likes knowing she can pick up. Well, I, I'm not going to put words in your mouth. No, no I, I, I do like... Uh, knowing that I can handle myself. Um, um, I also use this, I know this is going to sound really weird. I use this a lot for arts and crafts because it cuts very well with, through paper. And um, so I, I, I do use it for arts and crafts as a substitute for scissors because sometimes I can't like cut a perfect circle with scissors or something. But um yeah, I, I I do use this for arts and crafts, and I really enjoy this knife because I I keep it in my purse or in my bag or just in my pocket, and it I don't like ever bring it out, but I know I I can. Um, so it does make me feel more safe, and um, I know that I can handle myself if anything happens. So. Yeah, well, and also uh, the whole use of it for arts and crafts, like that's what I use this Finch Rentley for. Uh, it's another like. Scissors be damned. Oh, sorry. I should scissors be darned. <clears throat> I, um, I just, maybe it was art school. Got, got rid of the scissor in me. I just like a ruler and a, and a knife. And yeah. that's, the, uh, that's the best way to cut. So Projector. actually that is a real practical use for that, for that knife, which people might look at and think it's a novelty because it's all shiny and it's got the purple 
swirl and the and the lady leg, but it's actually a practical thing. So. Yeah, it is. I I very much enjoy it. Cool. All right. So before we get to your five favorite knives in my collection and why, I just want to share with uh, viewers and listeners a little game that you and I play every time the Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog shows up. Every time the Smoky Mountain Knife Works catalog comes, we play this game. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and thank you, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, for consistently putting out such an awesome paper catalog in this uh, era of hanging out on the phone all the yeah. time. I love getting a paper catalog. I, I like seeing them. Um, I like looking through them when you're not there, usually. <laughs> um, but I like looking through them, and some of them are look really cool. So, so gift ideas. You're thinking of gift ideas. Gift ideas? Sure. <laughs> all right. Okay. So the game we play is we turn to a page. I have marked out three different pages. We're going to look at Buck, Kershaw, and CRKT. But what we do is we flip flip to the page, and then the, the game is, okay, which would you choose if you could have anything on this page? So, Eden, which would you choose and why? Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I really like the Buck Frontiersman, and uh, that one looks very cool, so probably that. Okay. Well, I would pick one of these new Buck Pro 100 series because it's S35 VN and it's got micarta. You know, I love micarta. Yeah, I do. And these are classic design uh, bucks. These bucks are very, uh, you know, I have this one in the in the regular black plastic handle. I think the S35 VN is a great upgrade. Of course, micarta. They're, they're using S35 VN on the budgie right here. Uh, we talked about this on the show a couple of weeks back. And then also on the on their automatic, the Paradigm. This is an automatic or uh, manual, but they're they're using the uh, the S thirty five VN, which is great blade steel and a and a nice upgrade uh, from Buck's normal four twenty. All right, next, let's see. Uh, we're gonna go Kershaw next. They have a bunch of cool new knives this year. Let's see. What would you choose on this page? Um. Oh, oh wait, wrong one. Oh. Okay. There we go. This one. I like them all. <laughs> um, uh, so we're looking at a page of Kershaw's. They have some of the new, the new Strata, which is their Navaja, uh, their take on the Navaja. And they have all of these sort of futuristic looking. Yeah, that's what I was. I, I want this one. Ooh, we have this one. I know you do, but I want it. Okay. <laughs> that one, Pointing that one. Lucha, the butterfly knife. Um, that one. Okay. Probably. This is. Okay, that's yeah. a bunch of them. That's a lot All of them. All right, since I we have this like one, we'll, okay, we'll look at the capsule. Now, this is one that that has been, um, uh, I've been seeing quite a bit, this uh, capsule. It's a it's an Anzo-designed, um, out the front slide knife. And uh, it's it's got, uh, a, it's a single-edged blade, um, which is disappointing, of course, because it looks like it should be. <laughs> it, uh, it should be double-edged, but it's a cool little uh, little utility knife. Uh, dagger shaped utility knife. You could use it uh, much like a uh, one of those uh, exo sets, the Microtech uh, out the front. Um, yeah, you like that yeah. uh, money <laughs> clip. All right, so pick one. I, I well, I'll pick one first. Pick one. I would pick the Strata XL. That one looks nice. Yeah, I, I like a, the handle. Yeah, it's a futuristic kind of handle, but it's also shaped like an old fashioned thing. And this is their their brush at a, a uh, five and a half inch blade. So I want to see how this would compare to the big cold steels. So, I'd either, I'd probably choose that one. This I, one. I didn't even mm -hmm. mention that before, but I, it looks uh, double blade. Is that double It looks double edged, but what that is, that's a plastic knife that, that you can use to get through. No, no, no. I mean, you can still. I, I know. But, but yeah, that's know. not, that's, that's for putting in the shower. Or for oh, yeah. sneaking, sneaking, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, sneaking, it's, sneaking not, it's not good. So pick a different one. That one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That'll be your backup to the capsule. Yeah. Okay. All right. And lastly, in the, in the game of what would you choose on this page? CRKT. Oh my gosh. What would you choose on this page? This one looks really futuristic. Um, 
Oh, Brian Ty designed. Here, let's I, I can't know if I can see it or not. The Brian Ty, what is this? The Nurk Ty folder. Nurk Ty. Brian Ty seems to be a very eccentric dude. And his his blade designs are eccentric. His names are eccentric. And he himself seems eccentric. I've tried to get him on the show and uh We've had a couple of flirtations, but one of these days I'll get him on the show. I want to talk to him about uh, about his crazy designs. I think that's a sophisticated choice, child. You are other older than, than your years. Other than that, I'd probably choose um, one of the provokes. These, one of the provokes, yeah. Zap bright green, that one. The bright green one. That's pretty cool. I just sold uh, our our all metal version of the provoke to fund. <laughs> The favorite knife. Uh, so on this page, I would get, uh, for looks, I love the Lanny's clip, but I would get I would get this right here. I would get one of these new liner lock, uh, one of these new um, field strips uh, from, I'm sorry, one of the new Ken Onion design field yeah. strip knives. So that, that's what I mean. It, just because I want to try out this lever and see, see what that's like. That would be interesting to me. Uh, for some reason... They felt it was necessary to update the the field strip technology, and they did. Yeah. That that allows you to take the knife apart without tools. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's I risk. have mixed feelings on that. Oh, mixed feelings, huh? Yeah, that's what happens when you. Yeah. Okay. So let let us move along uh, to our last little segment here. We're going to talk about Eden's favorite knives in my collection. Now, you might you might. Okay, she's been around 10 years now. She's been around me for that amount of time, and I'm always showing her knives, even yeah. when she was really little. Hey, what do you think of this? Because if I can get buy-in from the kids, the whole family will <laughs> <laughs> the whole so family will fall in line. So uh, so let's talk about some of these favorites. So um this this um I don't this you Okay, this is a practice knife, and my dad used to keep it in the car, and every day on, like, the way to school or, the, uh, or back from school, I used to play around with this, which, like, most kids would probably play around with a Barbie, but no. <laughs> um, but I I really like this. Me and my dad have done certain, like, um, we've played around with it, and um, I found um, this, which is basically um, that, just sharp yeah this is the live bladed version <laughs> and these uh, are made by fox Sorry. this one i called uh this one griffin's finger so um this is griffin's finger extreme i guess <laughs> um extreme. it looks scary it looks almost like a raven kind of because like the raven beak and then the eye but um i i really like this one i think it does it does look pretty scary though um um looks like it could Take care of something, whatever yeah, that would, something it, is. I mean, it would really, it would really hurt. You can use karambits for utility, but really, yeah, yeah they're they're kind of meant for weapons. So let's close that one before we put it down, because those, I swear, karambits have a tendency to bite me. Yeah, <laughs> they just do. Uh, so what's next? So these two are. I'm putting them in as a couple, kind of. So these two are. Two of my favorite knives in my dad's collection because I found these when we were redoing my room. We needed to found this one when we were redoing my room because I needed to cut certain tape. And um, so, the, so this one is sorry. This is an automatic, and I really like it because sometimes I have trouble closing the blade. So uh, so this one's easy for me, and I really enjoyed that. And then while I was looking around my dad's collection, I found the baby one. So I had to put it in because um, I do enjoy both of them. I think that they are very cool. I like the blades too. Um, and I think they have a good shape. They fit pretty well in my hand. Um, and I really enjoy them. So let, let me uh, tell a little story. So this is the uh, this is the Kershaw Launch Pen, and this is the uh, this is the Protec TR3. Now, when we were redoing your room, still this has was, some paint on it. Yeah, like the, the this was one of the one of the knives we had uh, for cutting tape and stuff. And uh, you were you were up in your bunk bed before we disassembled it, and I heard click, click. And I heard it close, and then I heard click again, and then you're like, Daddy, 
I love this knife. Yeah, I, I, re I really like the knife. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we'll, we'll leave the paint on there so we can remember that afternoon. This was already, I bought this secondhand and it was, it was very used, uh, you know, well kept up, but very used. So I felt uh, justified in bringing this into a painting project. I really like them both. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those away, I'm just gonna put those right there. That's good. Okay, and these last two I like uh, for sentimental reasons. Um, this is Pinky Tuscadero. And it has a really funny name, but I like it. And I got this for my dad. I don't remember if it was a birthday or for Christmas, but um, I was in love with pink back then. <laughs> um, and so my mom found this, and she's uh, not found this, obviously, but she found it online, and she thought it was perfect. So um, I got it for my dad, and we named it Pinky Tuscadero for some reason. Oh, Pinky Tuscadero why. was Fonzie's girlfriend. And she wore pink skirts and black leather, but she doesn't. She doesn't even know who Fonzie. I don't know who Fonzie is. From Happy Days, baby. You know Happy Days. Hey. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I named it Pinky Tuscadero, but it reminded me of that that tough leather sock hop kind of look. And uh, I put that that uh, lanyard on there, and uh, I love that. I love that knife. That has been a classic back pocket knife, but. Not only does this thing have sentimental reasons, but I have to say, you, you are going to have to search far and wide to find a better three-inch knife uh, for the price than the, than the Rat 2. I love that knife. I love it better than the Rat 1. I think it is one of the smoothest, uh, um, what do you call it, washer knives ever. I love that thing. And what's the last one there? This is Sleepy Bear. And uh, again, I got this when I got this from my dad when I was little, and um, I was into Care Bears, um, and the Sleepy Bear was purple, I believe, so that's why we called it that. And I really like this knife because uh, you don't have to go in there to like uh, with Pinky Dusked Arrow, you have to. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's a liner lock but you gotta put a liner lock but this one is like this so you can lock it like that and just very i'm supposed to say very easily but for some reason i can't figure it out <laughs> just use the tip of your thumb again when you use the tip of your thumb yeah there we go um so i really like it i love the blade um how the blade is shaped i love the color and i think it's a very good design so yeah that's it. So you like you like the lock back because your finger doesn't necessarily have to get in the yeah. way of the blade. So um the reason why I like this the most is because um and this is because it doesn't lock. And I've always had a um a problem with uh uh liner closing lock. the knife. Yeah closing the knife and uh, liner locks. So um that's why I enjoy this and I like this knife. I like the Rough Rider. So um and the automatics. So, yeah. Well, uh, Eden, I'd have to say you have some pretty good taste. Pretty good taste. You know, I love Fox Knives of Italy. Yes. Italy, you know, it's like part of us. <laughs> and then uh, these these two, this ProTech is, uh, is really uh, such a great knife. And I mentioned to her that there is a knife made by Tops called the Lil Buddy. Lil, L-I-L apostrophe. Lil Buddy. And it's hard to find right now. I think that is also out of print, but it's a, um, it looks just like this. It, the handle looks just like this. It's got a three inch, um, but it's a fixed blade, um, 1095. So if I ever find that, I'm going to get you a Lil Buddy. I'm going to change the name to Little Timmy. Little Timmy. It just oh. sounds right. Little Timmy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so I think, I think that brings us to the yes. end of our show, but Eden, thank you for coming on and, and, uh, um, thank you for interviewing me. It's always nice to talk about yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I like, I liked doing that. And, uh, it's also good to see you, uh, gather together all of the knives that you like the best out of my collection, because, uh, that's just something I like to do. It just so happens, uh, that Eden's younger sister, who is six also has a thing for the automatics. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. We might have to wean them <laughs> off of that until they get, uh, until they get older. a little bit older. But uh, in this, any case... This would know, be perfect for her. That would be perfect <laughs> for her because it's so teeny it's tiny. It's so tiny. It's so cute, but so deadly. 
<laughs> just like her. Yes. All right. So uh, for Eden, thank you, Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco reminding you, check out Thursday Night Knives tomorrow right here at 10 p.m. Uh, live, 10 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, where we get together, hang out, and talk about knives with our friends around the world, literally. It's been mm -hmm. really cool. We've been talking to people all around the world. And uh, also join us on Sunday for another great interview show. So uh, like I said, I'm Bob DeMarco, and we'll see you here next week. Don't take dull for an answer, people. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.